Uh, good morning to everyone. Yeah, welcome uh, to Month of the Lord Church. We are so happy that you have chosen to worship with us and fellowship together. And I believe that you will feel like joyful as you always be because we have a great people here who are going to make you feel good. So thank you again. We are the Month of the Lord Church. And we are in a series about church as a healing community. And uh, with this in mind, <clears throat> I think God is talking to us to go through our vision, the vision of the church. So for a couple of weeks now, we've been talking about the vision of the church. So I'm going to read the vision, and then we're going to get into it. Our vision is, we are called to shine. Is it is in your, in your uh, bulletin, in a way, that we send, we send to, we give to everybody. We are called to shine in goodness and beauty, and be strong and filled with gladness, drawing people in from all around, equipping a great multitude from every nation, tribe, people and language to take up the work of the kingdom with joy. So in this vision we have, we are trying to develop to understand what that means really, so we can understand it because if you understand what God's called you to do, we will be effective. It's amazing that we have a vision, but we have not taken time to go deep to study that vision. It just come to me like uh, we need to do this. And I believe by doing this, we will respond exactly for what the church as a healing community should be supposed to be. So in a couple of weeks, we did introduction. And uh, the following one, we did shine because the Bible says the, the call is to shine and goodness. We all know that God called us to shine. God called us to represent him. When the people see us, they may not see God. But who we are in God can shine to people to see, to want to know the kind of God that we serve. And also, in the following week, we talk about strong. We have to be strong in the Lord. Because in everything we do in the society and the world system that we are living in, it's going to be a uh, struggle. You're going you're gonna to come against things. So people are going to come against you. They have to be a, a challenge in your call. That uh, the, Bible, the vision said you have to be strong in it. And not strong in your own willpower, but the strong that God will give you in order that you can uh, do what God called you to do. So the third point today is drawing people. Uh, first of all, you have to draw to God first. And when you draw to God, you get that power that allows people to be drawn into the Lord. So the point of today and the title is about drawing near to God. We are going to be talking about drawing near to God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again this morning. Thank you that any time we come, and your presence is a joyful moment. It's a joyful moment because we know the living world is going to be partake in our soul, to nourish our soul, to help us to see clearly and the strength, get the strength from your, the Holy Spirit. So, mighty God, I thank you for this word that we are going to share this morning. I pray that you show us the way to apply it. God, let this word go down inside us to nourish our soul and help us to enlighten whatever is there that is struggling us so we can come out of it, have our mind clear, clear, clean, and be, be capable, Heavenly Father, to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, we all know that the condition of our world should actually motivate you to be drawn close to God. Anybody who can be here right now can tell you the problem they are facing. We all have a, a, a difficult moment that we are facing. The government is not going to be 
projecting to us that uh, things are going to be like this. Uh, the world the system, actually, the things we are watching all the time is against the system, uh, the things of God. And uh, we are the people of God, and uh, the whole world is uh, stuck with what the culture is teaching us. So it's the moment, it's a, it's a call. It's a call for all of us to be drawing to, uh, to God. This is the moment we have to learn how to be drawn to God. And I'm saying this because it's so serious. And the body of Christ, and I love every Sunday, anytime, whether it's Sunday or Wednesday or Thursday or food ministry, when we all come together, we always have a word to strengthen each other in a way that we haven't strengthened each other before. Because this strength comes, the unity that we have by serving the Lord Jesus Christ. So, drawing to God will be a powerful thing for all of us. We need to have that spirit. And sometimes we ask ourselves, how can I draw near to God? How can I do this? Let's read James 4, verse, uh, verse 8 to 10. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hand, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You double-minded. Be wrecked and moon and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself, verse 10. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. This is the writing from James to the churches. This is the things that we all can be saying. It's like God this morning is speaking to you and to me. We are, like I said, stuck in the situation of the culture. And sometimes we need to hear the word like this. And the word is to draw near to God. And to draw near to God, God is, is, is in the moment to move in in your life. At the same time, the Satan trying to, his aim is to preventing the closeness to God. But that's what we call sometimes the flesh and the spirit. Sometimes you want to do the good things and the flesh who's been not sure so much of the things of this world are trying to say, uh-uh, I'm not feeling good because we are educated by, go by what we feel. It's not more what God is telling me. So we, we, we all be educate ourselves too much and the feeling, feeling. And those feelings which is God gave to us, which is a good thing, but we nourish that so much with the system of the culture. So much to the point where we have a war that is going on. But God said to draw near to him. So how do we do this? He said first to cleanse your hand. Another word, cease to do evil. Cease to do whatever that makes the blockage between your relationship with God. Cease to not do anything that will offend your or our Almighty God. Washing and cleansing your hand. Making sure that you are in the place where you have a clean heart to serve Him. And He said again, the way you do it is to purify your heart. How do you purify your heart? Many times, the Bible is talking about to, not, to get out of the system of the world. Purify is to separate yourself. Set yourself apart to the place where you can have a, just a true relationship with Jesus Christ, your Savior. And, uh, and another point is humble yourself. The, the verse is talking about humble yourself before God. You know, it is possible, all the way possible, to submit outwardly to God at the same time and not to inwardly submit yourself to the Lord. You know, whatever we do physically that let people believe, it doesn't mean that you are truly meant, meant what you are doing. Because outside we express something, but inwardly there are something that uh, we knew that is there, but God knew that also. So this is, a, this is a kind of things that we are dealing with all the time. That's why God say always that he hates the sin of pride. 
You know, the sin of pride, this is, this is the things that we have to deal with. We have to be able to recognize it and deal with. One mark of a true humility is facing the seriousness of sin and dealing with our disobedience. You know, my prayer, I always pray over the Mount of the Lord church members because we are not different from other churches. We are not different from other people, the suffering, the things they are dealing with. But I pray for God to have mercy upon our life. I pray for God to start bringing the understanding of his word. Because he's the one who's going who gonna to convict you for where you are in order for you so you can take the next step of being cleansed your hand, be able to purify yourself and be capable to serve him. This is my prayer. And we have to keep praying together for God's mercy upon all churches and especially upon the Mount of the Lord Church. We don't want to be hypocrites. We want to be acting like, just like uh, with pride, but we, not be, we want to be sincere in our heart to serve the Lord the way he wants us to do it. So we need his help. The Bible says in Isaiah 60, 66, Verse 2b says, I will bless those who have humble and contrite hearts who tremble at my word. This is a, a, a thing, I believe, humble yourself is a matter of a self-examination of a who you are. And I was telling, oh, this morning, I was telling someone who just, you know, trying to talk to me about He's, he took by taking responsibility for what he did wrong. And I say, I love this when the people come to me and they just, you know, accept that doing, that what they did. That's what we are. Nobody is perfect. But when we mess things out, take responsibility. That means that you don't like it, you don't want it, it happen. So let's pray. Let's make that another turn and I ask God to help us so and next time we can be a better people. So, draw near to God, and God will draw near to us. So when we do this, when we are in a position to draw near to God and uh, uh, allow God to change the shape of our core and where, where he wants us to be and how he wants to use us, that's the moment we can have his will. We need to get to understand the will of God in our life. You know, the first step to draw near to God, you recognize who you are, ask God for forgiveness, and make sure that God is working through you because he gave you the power of the Holy Spirit. At that moment, that's the difficult part of life. If you can get through that, then you are in a position now to start hearing from the Lord to start to know the God will for your life. Because anybody who doesn't have God will for his life, he might try to manufacture things that even God is, may not be in it. But God wants every one of us to have his will, to know his will. So Romans 12, verse 2. Don't copy I want, to, I want to read it from New Living Translation and ESV. I want to read the both. The first one said, Don't copy the behavior and the custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. That is the New Living Translation. And uh, ESV says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. If you think about this scripture, God is trying to give us a direction, how we can be drawn to him and how we can understand his will. Like I said, there are steps in the Christian work. There are salvation we always talk about. You have to know God. You have to give yourself to the Lord. And you have to, you have to recognize that we are sinners, but God came so we can have salvation, eternal life. 
then you, you, when you go through that process, you are in a place where you start to discover what God wants from you. So those, this scripture is telling you that uh, being conformed to the world is not the best way. That's why he said, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed. In other words, you need to give your mind to Christ. Give your mind to Christ. The world wants to control your mind. That's the one thing you have to know. They study it. They know how to control your mind. But God wants to transform your mind. The world wants to control it, but God wants to transform it. So the world, uh, the world transform into... Our English word is metamorphosis. So it describes change from within. So that's where transforming is about. The change, when Christianity starts talking about changing, it's not just good, good looking, make, you know, how we can make ourselves you know, elderly so people can appreciate us. The change in the Christian world is from inside. Transform from inside. So, the world, the world wants to change your mind, so it applies a pressure from without. That's what the world does all the time. But the Holy Spirit changes your mind by releasing power from within. So we are, so that's why I always go back to Galatians 5. You know, the spirit and the flesh, they are constantly in a, in a battle between both. That's why we always talk about uh, people of God, we are so special. Once you give your life to Christ, you are special. Now you have to learn how to have your relationship with God. Constantly, constantly, constantly. We are not people in the world, we wait until we get in trouble before we start saying, oh, God help me, oh, God help me. No, God wants you to be in connection with him at all time. Not because you are in trouble. When you are in a trouble, it's great to go to him. But when you are not in a trouble, it's great to celebrate him. Because there are moments to celebrate. There are moments to talk to the Lord about our problem. Amen? So we have to give our mind to the Lord. If the world controls your thinking, then you are a conformer. If God controls your thinking, then you are a transformer. God transforms our mind and makes us spiritually minded by using the word. That's why we always say, you, you, you transform your mind by the word of God. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus, God, to help everyone in this house to start taking the word of God seriously. You know, the people spend a lot of time, a lot of money to go to the psychiatric. Uh, I'm not, I don't have anything against that. You can do that. But I'm telling you, if you can learn to read the Bible about a lot of things that the Holy Spirit can do, and we call the gift of the Spirit, like a joy, like a patience, I mean, like a peace, like a faithfulness, like a gentleness, like a goodness, self-control. All these good things God can do in our life because of the power and the Holy Spirit. How will you know that? By reading his word. By asking him, God, this is where I am. I need you to nourish me for the, the things that I'm lacking in my life. We are lacking something in our life that we, we are not capable to be able to be producing some, uh, something good for the world, for those who are around us. So we need to extend ourselves to the Lord constantly so that God can do those um, transformations I'm talking about from within ourselves because all have to take power within you. Making your, more, your mind more spiritual. Making your mind more spiritual by the word of God. You know, like I said, you got to meditate on the word. Memorize sometime if you have to. 
A lot of people talk about memorization, the word. Why I, I look at the memorization is when you keep reading things over and over that you like, before you know where you already memorize it. You don't make it like, I have to memorize it, and you make that like a heaviness inside you. Just love to take your Bible and look to the scripture that you love all the time, the scripture that speaks loud to you. You keep reading the same scripture over time, you memorize it without even knowing it. You know, you can quote that scripture so easily. So love things that God expects you to do because he wants to be in you. He, you are so precious to him. And that's why he gave us the word of God. That's why he wants us to be closer to him. So why not do this to save a lot of pain that every one of us is going through? So he will give you his will. Your mind control your body, like I said and your will control your mind. Many people think they can control their will by willpower, you know? I, I can do it by myself, I don't need nobody help. Yeah, we call that pride. Yeah, and sometimes at the end we feel like uh, we can achieve it. But if you say with a humble spirit, God help me, he will give you that willpower to get the same thing done easily. Easily, just try. You know, sometimes when you say things in the pulpit, it, it, it might sound so easy, but if you start trying things, you will testify by your own word, wow, he did it for me. Yes, be why? Because you are his child. You are his loved one. He cares for you. The word of God is for those who love him. So he said, those who love me, who care for me, and who want to learn about me, when they take this word, they just speak to me directly. That's why the word of God is so powerful. Like any two-edged sword. These things that you cannot manipulate it. It's pure, it's holy, it's Jesus Christ himself. Amen? So he, 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 wants to, he, he give us his will. And it is only when we yield to the will of God that his power can take over and give us the will power. We have to surrender to God's will through discipline, prayer. Yeah, we say that prayer is not like you have to be crazy about it. You just love the Lord. When you love your little child, you want to spend time with him, right? You want to take him to ice cream, right? You want to play with him. This is the love, the real love. And when you love your wife, who you want to get surprised, you just you get take her for shopping, right? Uh, yeah, you do all the great things because the love. When we say we love God, we don't, we, we don't need just to say the word only. We have to show the action. God said, if you love me, then you do what I ask you to do. That's what in the scripture. But most of the time we just say, I love you, I love you, I love you, but we don't put in practice what God expects us to do. Amen? Then when we get to that place of uh, yielding to the Lord and have his will, what happens? We serve God with joy. That's why so many people serve God with joy. We don't understand it. Why make you so happy serving God? But he built a strong foundation. People who do those work, when you watch them, they start serving God, they never get tired. They have built a strong foundation. They love Jesus. They, 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 they ask a lot for a lot of prayer. They, they ask God to forgive them. They have make a lot of mistakes, but they still run to the Lord. And, uh, and through the whole process, they have built a strong foundation. They are not perfect. None of us is perfect, let me tell you. We all are called to fall a couple of times. We've been falling all the time. But God, if you just can understand that that's why Jesus came for all of us. He came because we are not, we can get the job done. And he did it for us. When you, when you understand that, that uh, uh, it's not about me, I have to rely for the one who have all the power who can strengthen me, who can direct me, he can give me all those things I needed to accomplish the goal and the vision he gave me, then you are in the good hand. You're going to fall, the devil might try to trip you, but you stand up again. That you said to the devil, the greater that is me is powerful than the one in the world. And the people say, you are not good enough, you tell that God called me saint. 
He said, I'm his special person. You know, the devil is going to tell you, the world is going to point finger on you, but the world is going to tell you exactly who you are. Just bring the scripture to that person. That's why the knowledge of the truth is always set people free. Know what God say about you, and, and, not, and, and not be just beating down because you heard somebody say something to you and offend you. We have seen all the time in the Bible. Those people who serve God, they have a make mistake, but they serve God with all their heart. Like David, he did. He, he's, the, he's the person who always bowed down with all the sin, the way he have uh, uh, done the things. He started well, but uh, uh, along the way, he just break, he just sin. Uh, he, done, he have done things that is not supposed to. But he, he the same person uh, come to the point where he just worshiped the Lord. He asked God to forgive him, to restore him back. And uh, he wrote this, uh, the psalm that is just lift your heart. Just let you know that uh, if those great people can go through those tough moments, if you go through it, don't beat yourself down. Just get up and praise the Lord. Get up to worship him. And 27, 6, he said, Therefore, I will offer sacrifice of praise in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes. I will praise him. I will, I will sing praises to the Lord. Psalm 32, 11, shout for joy, all of you upright in heart. Psalm 122, verse 1, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I mean, we all know the story of David. We are talking about a lot of people in the Bible, all of them who have made really, really um, seen that uh, incomparable we can talk about. But God, their heart, they went through it, but their heart is after God. They come up from there and they start to worship the Lord. They come up from there, they take responsibility, they just lay the, 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 the whole body in the floor, cry up to the Lord to forgive them, to, to wash them in the blood, to cleanse them back and strengthen them. This is who we are. Those moments are going to come to you when you go through those difficult moments. Don't beat yourself down. That's not the time to beat yourself down. There's a time just to go to the Lord and, and tell him exactly what you're going through. You're not going to fake it. It's real. Tell your father that I'm going through difficulties. Tell your father that I need your help. Tell your father to show you the scripture of encouragement so you can meditate on those things to release you from your pain. And he is capable of doing that. Amen? I, I have a little bit of illustration here I want to read to you. I don't know if it's going to make you fun, but a mother went to wake up, to wake up her son for church one Sunday morning. When she knocked on, the, on his door, he said, I'm not going. Why not? Asked his mother. I will give you two, grand, two good reasons. He said, one, they don't like me. Two, I don't like them. His mother replied, I will give you two good reasons why you will go to church. One, you are 47 years old. Two, you are the pastor. <laughs> so that means that you better go to church when you are a pastor. <laughs> you have a car, you can stay home because, you know, you choose to be in home. So, you know, uh, there are, there are moments we, I know this society get us in, in out of track. We are so busy. We are, we live in uh, uh, our life are so busy that one of the first things we decided, especially Sunday, is to want to do our own things instead to be in the people, be among people of God to worship the Lord. You know, it's happening all the time. And I'm telling you, there are power for the saints to come together. It's in the scripture, it's a power. And uh, those, uh, those blessings is difficult for me to define clearly so you will understand until you put yourself on it. Because when you are al alongside with people who love the Lord, it's just like an iron sharp iron. It's something taking place spiritually that you cannot see but so real. 
so real and so powerful. We have a word of encouragement. We have people who are so gifted. Whatever they are gifted for, they just put that on the table. You know, um, I, I have a testimony for yesterday, but it, it's a good testimony, but I don't want to take too much time. Uh, yesterday, I visited a place uh, of meeting, but the good thing is at the end of that meeting, somebody gave their life, his life to Christ, which is just, it happened like that. And we are so thankful because this is who we are. You know, people see things on us. They want those things, but they don't know how to express it to have those things. But we have to be, be capable to see things beyond the problem, the situation that things that people are saying to us. And we just use opportunity. God opened my eyes to see that opportunity and embrace this guy and talk to him and led him to Jesus, which is so fantastic. So I am praying that uh, we be able to help people along the way. So when should we draw near to God? When? Are you, when we are happy? Yes. When you're happy, you draw near to God by celebrate him, by be so thankful for who, for what he has done in your life, and let that light shine for other people to see. But there are moments people are wounded. People are spiritually wounded. Their heart is wounded. They don't even know what to do. You have to be drawn to God also. It can be easy to become overwhelmed by life. But instead of holding everything in, reach out for help. You know, we talk about help. People can pray for you. They have professionals out there. Uh, they have a pastor that you know. They have a love, you know, in the body of Christ. People can pray. People can fellowship. They can do so many things. Don't just hold on when you go through trouble by yourself. That's exactly what God like, uh, devil wants. You know, when things are heavy on your chest, find someone to talk to. Call for help. God is the way for you. God said, I have a plan for all of us. But the devil wants to confuse you to the point where you feel like you are the only one who's going through difficulties. You are the only one who are having this problem. No, you are not the only one. You are not the only one. Because this is the society we are living in. And this society is full of any kind of things. That's why we are against the spiritual warfare all the time. But you know what? When you are in the body of Christ, don't be overwhelmed by yourself and just say that I'm done. No. Find help. Find help and call people to pray with you. You know, no matter how long it has been since you have a truly felt God's presence, Sometimes when you feel like you are away from God, come back. God never going to push you away. Never. He loves you. First of all, he pursued you. That's why he went to that cross. He did for us, for all of us, and he wants us to grow in our relationship with him. So God is a loving God. He's a powerful God. There's no any match. There are no match with God. So I'm encouraging you, if you are going through difficulties, find help. Maybe you might say, my future seems uncertain. I feel like I don't have a future. But I want to let you know, Jeremiah 29, 11, that I have a future for you. So that also is a lie. You have a future. It doesn't matter how old you are. You still have a future because our God, have already planned for you even before you come to this world. God have a future for you. You know, so many people in the Bible, like I said earlier, they had the temptation and weakness of their own. But God, the desire to do God's will so powerful over their temptation. They never give up. I'm asking you never, 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 never give up for things you know in your heart is the right to do. Sometimes, in order to walk with God, we need to walk away from the things that separate us from God. You know, if you want to walk with God, it's just tough decisions sometimes. And make it voluntarily. Don't make somebody push on you. Understand that it's your life who's online. 
I'm doing this for my salvation and I want to be in a right relationship with God. When you make that decision personal, that will be actually helpful to you. When we are in that kind of position, God always wants to help. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So God has always a way in every difficulty. He always has a way. So are you confused today? Are you confused because you don't understand everything and everything seems like uh, I don't even know what I'm doing? Yeah. God, is, like I, I, read that, I read that scripture, God said that he is the way. God always has a way. You have to choose whom you are serving. If you serve God really from your heart, your soul, and mind, he always has a way for you. But if your God is the things of this world, it will be difficult. You might try to reach out to God, but it's like something to pull you back. And your work to reach out to the Lord will be tougher. And you might be saying, why is it difficult for me? Just watch yourself in the mirror and be honest about yourself. I might be in the right place and I might be doing the right things. Because God says in his word, he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And he wants everyone to be in the right place. Are you in the deception today? There are something that you feel like, uh, I, I can't even trust anybody anymore. Yes, it happened. God said that uh, he's the truth who opened up our understanding and give us knowledge of God. We are going to be in that position sometime. You know, a truth that confounds the wisdom of men and a truth that silences all the presupposition of a prideful humanity. Jesus not only teach the truth, but he is incarnate truth. Another word, if you find, you, you feel like uh, you don't understand, you are confused, you, are, you are feel like uh, there are deception in your life, God wants to bring that truth to you so that you will know for yourself that he is still on the throne and he still wants to redeem your life. God is a God who loves every one of us. He's a redeemer, but we have to make a way for him to work on us. If you just like, oh, I don't want to do anything over for God, it's not what he wants from you. But I'm praying that you be set free completely from that resistant spirit just to say, God, here I am, like Isaiah said, send me. Sometimes we're going to say, here I am, oh, mighty God, use me. When you start get yourself in that position, I'm telling you, you're going to be a richest man of this world. When we talk about richest things, we, talk, we always think about money. But the richest things in the world is having God who can control your life. You can have peace in your heart. You can do things, wake up through, uh, with a full of happiness. People have money. They don't even have a happiness in their life. They are struggling every single day. But God wants to give you that richness, which is the happiness in the world. Amen? So let me um, tell you something you can apply today. Draw near with a true heart. God, even before you go to him, he knows your heart. Trying to find out where you are. Are you need really to confess? Are you need really to make everything right in order for you to draw near to God? See your, your heart. Check your heart and make things possible for God to work on you. The Bible says that uh, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. Relationship with God is so powerful when we come to the point where we want just to serve God with a clean hand and a pure heart. God will do the work with you. Draw near with God with a confidence faith. The Bible talks about faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. When a guy starts speaking to you and guiding you to the, the place, the step, 
that you know he's, he's walk alongside with you, trust him that uh, he's God. We are not. Have faith that he will take you to the end. In full assurance of faith, increase the assurance of a fellowship with God, knowing that he can do it. Like Hebrews 11, 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Brothers and sisters, God has a better plan for all of us. I'm telling you, you might look at yourself today like it's not working. A things can change over a couple, couple hours, even over a second, because God is in control. Put everything in the hand of God. He will help you. This is what I want to ask you again to remember I say I'm closing right now. God will draw near to us if we draw near to him. God will draw near to us if we draw near to him because he always make a way in every step of way so you can get close to him. We all know that God is holy, you know? He's holy, so he gave us step how we can draw close to him. So my prayer is, uh, I want, do you want to draw near to God today? Do you want to really to draw near? I know it's, you might look like there's a lot of work to do, but ask God just to help you. He will help you. He's the one who, who, who can help you at the gate to make things accessible to you. We will know God will. It's very important. When we draw near to God, that's the moment to have God will. When you have a God will, boy, it's like you are ready to take off. Your airplane is ready to take off to go everywhere you want to go. The Holy Spirit just dwell in you, and you are ready to go. Then we will serve God with joy. This is all. Please, God love you. God love all of us. Those who are watching, God love you. And all this message is about draw near to him. And he will draw near to you. May God bless all of you. And thank you for listening to me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this morning, for this message. Yes, it seems like it's a long way to get there. It seems like it's difficult. Everything seems like it's impossible. But God, thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you because with you, all are possible. With you, we can do anything, and with you, everything is possible. So, mighty God, we pray for everyone who listens to this message. God, for self-examination, knowing that to draw near to God is dependent on themselves. They can make effort to do that, and God wants to draw near to us. So, mighty God, we just thank you. Bless this message to the heart of everyone. We give all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.